Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, I'm very excited to show you what's new in Oxygen 4.3. 4.3 is a release focused entirely around a brand new element called Site Navigation, which you can see here in this design. The Site Navigation element was built from the ground up for accessibility. So here's what a basic example looks like. This is all built in the WordPress menu screen. So you do not have to build this by hand. You build it in the WordPress admin panel, just like you would any other WordPress menu. And then the site navigation element renders that out. And you can choose which WordPress menu to display. But let's just do a quick tour through the controls available on this element. Over here, the first thing we get when we select the site navigation element is our navigation title. This is important for accessibility if you have multiple navigation elements on the page. This helps folks that are using screen readers to be able to identify which navigation element they're using and what it's for. Then of course we have the drop down for selecting which WordPress menu to show. And then we get into our little sub categories here. So let's jump into mobile settings. We can tell it when to switch to the mobile menu and where the mobile menu should be. So let's go ahead and set this to always. And this is kind of the default state of the mobile menu. If we click our little hamburger icon, it's gonna go ahead and pop down. And that animation is based on the global animation setting set for the entire menu, which affects both the mobile menu and drop down animations. So we'll take a look at those settings in a minute, but let's go ahead and switch the position to right. And you can see that it's over on the right hand side now. And you can see we don't have any other mobile specific controls. That's because the site navigation element is meant to be an element that gives you the core functionalities that you need without overwhelming you with styling options. So let's go over here and look at general styles. This is where most of your styling will happen. But first let's switch back to the desktop menu so that we can see what we're working with. Now under general styles, we have a few color options. These are applied intelligently across the entire menu. So you can see our primary color is used for our text. Our neutral color is actually used for the menu item backgrounds. Our active hover color is used when we hover over the items as you can see here. And then our background color is used for any backgrounds that we might have like our sub menus. By changing these colors here, you're gonna affect the entire menu, which means you don't need to go through and style a bunch of different states. Instead, you just make sure you generally use a darker color for primary and background, and lighter colors for neutral and active slash hover, and your menu's gonna look great. Then we go on down to radius and spacing. We can set a border radius. Let's set it to something really high so you can see what that looks like. You can see when we hover them and the drop down menus, everything has a matching border radius. And we also have some spacing. You can slightly adjust the size of basically everything in the menu by stepping that up. And that's gonna give you more space around your link text and things like that. It'll also be used for the space between the items if you choose to activate that. And there's a look at probably a too large value for that. And if you go down to something like zero, obviously that's not gonna look very good. So sticking around eight gets you a pretty good result. And let's go ahead and uncheck this add space between items. You can see that just spaces the top level menu items out a bit more. And then we have another few options here. We can use transparent backgrounds for the top level menu items. Here it doesn't matter so much because we're on a white or light colored background, but if this menu was on a different color background and you didn't want the white background on the top level menu items, you could use that to get rid of it. And then we have an underline effect for current menu items. By default, you can disable that with this checkbox here. And finally, we have some animation settings. These are all CSS animations and they determine how your dropdowns appear and how your mobile menu appears. So we have slide up, which gives us that effect. We have drop down, which looks like that. And then we have scale and none. These also respect prefers reduced motion. So if a user has set up their browser to let the website know that they don't want a bunch of things moving around, these animations will just default to none. We can change the duration and type in our own timing function as well. We try to make sure that most of the defaults are pretty solid out of the gate. So really you only need to tweak styles, maybe your icons, and then you're good to go. But for those that wanna do more tweaking, there is a little bit more control available. So that's the whole general style section. Now we have CTA styles. 
Something we wanted to do with this menu was allow a little bit more advanced functionality without introducing complexity. So the way we did that with CTA styles is we added a simple checkbox that says style last items as CTA. If it's unchecked, your menu looks normal. If you check it, the last item gets a CTA style. You can choose outline or you can choose solid. You can also choose to have up to two CTAs, which will cause the last two items to be styled as CTAs. And you can see that we have different style combinations for those last items as well. So we have solid slash outline and outline slash solid. We also have some color overrides for our CTAs in case we're in a unique scenario where the default colors don't work for these elements. But as a general rule, these can stay as default. Then we have the typography submenu. Again, stay out of this unless you need something very specific, but this does let you override typography settings for specific levels of the menu or the entire menu. Under all typography, this cascades down kind of like our heading settings do, where if we set all typography, that style is gonna be applied to all the menu levels, but then we have the ability to override on an individual level, such as main, submenu, and sub submenu. We can also tweak the typography for descriptions, which can be added to your menu in the WordPress menu screen. There will be two new fields, one for description and one for an image. Now we get into icons. Link icons allow you to adjust the size of the images that you've added in the WordPress menu screen. And this invert on submenu and CTAs option allows you to invert icons where that's appropriate such as if we had an icon or image on this CTA and it was black, we might want it to be white instead. So we could tell the site navigation element to invert the submenu there and on any submenu so that it doesn't blend into the background. This is mostly appropriate for black or white images or icons. Now we get into drop-down icon. We can choose an icon for our drop-down. By default, it's a downward facing chevron. We can also adjust the size and the color. Now we're gonna get into mobile menu icons. So let's go back over here and swap to the mobile menu. We're gonna choose always here, and then we'll go back over to icons and mobile open icon. By default, we just have an SVG chooser, which allows you to choose from any icon sets that you've added in Oxygen. But we also added a CSS option, which allows you to use a CSS icon that can be animated. So by default, it's not animated, but you can choose from any of these animations. Let's just show how collapse looks. You can see that it's got a nice little sequenced animation there. And then if we go to mobile open icon again, we can also adjust the icon size and the color. And finally, we have the mobile close icon, which works just like the mobile open icon, except for it does not have animation options since it just shows an X. This just allows you to match your close icon to your open icon when using the CSS icon type. We can also choose the size and color and the position of this icon in the mobile menu. And if we go on back, that is about it for controls. So again, we get a lot of power and a lot of flexibility in this element without overwhelming the user with controls. Sure, this does limit you a little bit, but if you're familiar with CSS and you wanna make some tweaks, this element should be pretty easy to work with in that way as well. And going back to the roots of why this element was even built, this site navigation element is fully keyboard accessible and very compatible with screen readers. We actually tested it with screen readers as we were building it to make sure that it worked as expected. We've also had lots of helpful feedback from our users that helped us to tweak and refine this into what might be the most accessible menu element from any WordPress site builder out of the box. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team and that's what's new in Oxygen 4.3. Thank you very much for watching.